So in this video, I wanna provide an overview of drawing in perspective. And then in the next video, I'll show you how to use guides and Blender Grease Pencil to draw in perspective there. So you need three things when you're drawing in perspective. You need vanishing points, the horizon line, and then the lines themselves. And for me, the line themselves can be broken up into three parts, at least in one point perspective. And I'll show you what I mean by one point, two point, and three point perspectives in a minute. So one point perspective, you need one vanishing point, one horizon line, and three types of lines. And the types of lines are lines that are parallel to the horizon line, lines that are perpendicular to the horizon line, and then lines that move to the vanishing point. This will be our horizon line. Now horizon line is wherever the viewer's eyes are in real life. So when you're walking around or sitting or looking up or looking down, the horizon line is where your line of sight is. But for TV shows and movies, the horizon line is wherever the camera is looking. And then the viewer is just watching the, what the camera is seeing. In comic books, the horizon line is wherever the artist wants it to be. So in Photoshop, I've drawn a horizon line, and then I just arbitrarily put it there. You can put it wherever you want. It doesn't have to be you know, perfectly straight across. It can be at an angle, but any line after that, at least in one point perspective, the parallel lines have to follow the same angle as the horizon line, and the perpendicular lines have to be perpendicular to the parallel lines. So in this one, I've just made the line straight. So I'm gonna add a vanishing point, We'll just say that's the vanishing point. Now say I wanna draw a building that vanishes to that point. So there's my perpendicular line, there's my parallel line, another perpendicular line, another parallel line. And then that line is gonna to extend to the vanishing point. And then I can erase these. And then I need one more perpendicular line. And then I'll erase these. So now we've got a shape that is in perspective, one point perspective. So if we drew another line over here And I erase these. And I use this vanishing point here and here. Do one more perpendicular line here. And erase these. And then everything on the side of these, say there were buildings, if you had windows, you know, those are gonna go to the vanishing point. And there's a perpendicular line. So one point perspective, everything that's not a parallel line that's parallel with the horizon line or perpendicular to the horizon line will vanish to this point. Now, there are some exceptions because say you're looking down an alleyway. Well, all the buildings are gonna follow the same lines of perspective. However, if you have something in the alley that's you know, line, not lined up with the buildings, like a dumpster or something, its lines will still vanish at the horizon but they'll be at different vanishing points because they're not in line with everything else. So that's one point perspective. There's really not a lot to it. Like I said, three lines, perpendicular, parallel, and then the remaining lines vanish to wherever you put your vanishing point. So two point perspective has two vanishing points, one horizon line, and then typically perpendicular lines. The remaining lines will vanish to one of two vanishing points. 
So again, if I put a vanishing point here and here, then I want to draw. So there's my perpendicular line. I'll draw here, here. Draw two more perpendicular lines and erase those. So now that's in perspective. And again, you'd be more you'd be more exact with the lines you're using on these, but since this is just a demonstration, you get the idea. So once you set your vanishing points, everything in the scene should be in between those vanishing points. So if I draw another line here, that, I'll do that. So now that's in perspective. As you can see on the right side here, because it's so close to that vanishing point, it's a very extreme angle. So that's something to keep in mind. So that's two point perspective. So in three point perspective, I need three vanishing points, uh, a horizon line, and all the lines in it will be directed to one of the three vanishing points. So they won't be parallel or perpendicular. So for, let me add a vanishing point here, here, and here. And let me turn off this horizon line. So I draw that here and say I'm drawing a building, I'm looking up at it from the ground. And then I draw here, here. And then I want to erase these. So you're using three point perspective, especially if you've got like this vanishing point at the top, it may be really far away uh, from your drawing. And I'll show an example of vanishing points being off the page in a second. So again, you could have a vanishing point here, here, and here. And your drawing may be here. Let me erase these and put these off the page too. You know what, I'll just start another. So say this is your canvas. Your vanishing point at the top could be up here. These could be down here. They may not even be in the frame. So see my vanishing points are out of frame. Having those further away makes the perspective not seem near as extreme. So again, the best thing you can do is have a lot of uh, references to kind of give you an idea of how you want your scene to look and then use those and get an idea where those vanishing points are. So I've got some examples to kind of show what I just talked about. So in this scene from Daredevil, this is a one point perspective scene, and here's the horizon line. And I know that's the horizon line because if I go to one point perspective and click on it, if you look at the pipes at the top and then some of the uh, beams inside the lit up space, you see they all end at this point. So since they end at that point, and this is one point perspective, I know my horizon line has to cross that. And my horizon line is parallel with the other lines going horizontally across the scene. So you can see those in green. And here's my perpendicular lines. 
Now, again, you could turn this whole scene, you know, angle it a different way. And the one point perspective would still work. You would have the horizon line angled. All the other lines parallel to it would be the same angle. And then the perpendicular lines would be perpendicular to that. Okay, I've got one more example of one point perspective I want to show you. Now, this one is an example of, again, in real life, the horizon line is wherever you're looking. But on TV and movies, it's wherever the camera's at. So you can see the camera here is high up against the ceiling and then kind of just pointed down a little bit. So if I turn on my perspective lines, you can see they all end at this corner above the window. So that gives me my perspective point. Then if I turn on my parallel lines, well, let me turn on the horizon line first. So there's the horizon line. And I know that's the horizon line because the other lines in the scene are parallel to it. So you can see there is slightly angled. They're higher on the left than the right. So my perpendicular lines are also at a slight angle because they are perpendicular to the parallel lines. So I just want to show an example of how the whole scene doesn't necessarily have to be straight left and right, straight up and down. Everything can be turned. So it still works from a one point perspective view if everything's turned. So here's an example of a two point perspective. And again, all these are scenes from Daredevil. If you haven't seen it, watch it. And I'm going to turn on the left perspective lines. And you can see those are following the beams in the ceiling and the windows. If I turn on the right, you can see how those are following the other beams in the windows. If I scroll out, you can see the vanishing points and how far away they are from the actual scene. So if you were drawing this, your vanishing points would be far off the canvas, which, you know, I've done this, you know, drawing with paper and pencil, so it's so much easier to do this in a digital setting. So based on those vanishing points, I can get my horizon line. And this is kind of working backwards. You'll typically set the vanishing points and the horizon lines first when you're actually drawing it. But in order to find vanishing points and the horizon line in an existing drawing or scene, you can work backwards and set up your perspective lines first, and that'll give you your vanishing points and then the horizon. So you can see the perpendicular lines, like the columns in the room, they're still straight up and down. Now for three-point perspective, I'm going to turn on my top perspective lines. And you can see how those are getting closer together as they get off the canvas. Left, see how those are. And then right. And I only chose a couple of lines to demonstrate the right ones because it's pretty much all of those windows on the brown building in the middle of the scene. So if I scroll out, You can see how far away the upper vanishing point is. And the horizon line is at the bottom. But again, in three point perspective, it's not as vital to have that information as it is in one and two. So that's a quick explanation of how perspective works. And again, it's a very complicated subject sometimes, but this is just the very basics of how it works. In the next video, I'm going to go into Blender and use Grease Pencil with Guides to show you how easy it is to create a one-point perspective scene in Blender. So I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.